Good morning, everybody. It is great to see you guys this morning. I am incredibly thankful uh, that you are here on this first Sunday of March and the start of spring break season and all the things. Hasn't the weather been amazing the last week? It's supposed to be like 74 this afternoon. Anybody happy about it? Just saying, just saying. Um, We're happy that it's warm for a few months, and then it'll get to be June, and we'll be praying for fall. So anyway, um, we'll take it, though, for what it is right now. Uh, It's been so fun to see some of the flowers blooming in the community, Um, and believe it or not, it's Easter month. Isn't that crazy, everybody? So Easter's a little early this month. It's on the 31st, and uh, I'm really excited about just the season that we have always in anticipation of Easter. I would encourage you... um, if you do not have um, a way to kind of uh, mark the Lenten season, the time of preparation leading up to Easter, I would encourage you to check out um, some resources. Uh, reach out to us if you don't know what to do. There's a fantastic book called Journey to the Cross written by Paul David Tripp that I've used for quite some time. There's also some great devotionals that are online and on apps. But I would encourage you in this season uh, to anticipate uh, just with the calendar year. I think there's opportunity for us to really draw near to Jesus in a special way during the Lenten season, the time before Easter. And I would just encourage you to think about what you could do to add to kind of what you normally do uh, on a daily basis to really uh, consider Christ and consider his sufferings for us and um, just to draw near to him. So anyway, happy March, happy March. Um, Also, just one bit of housekeeping. Next Sunday, we begin our new spring teaching series. Have you heard? Um, We're really excited about it. Um, We're going to be starting a journey through the book of Colossians. And so I would encourage you to be here, of course, yourself, but also to spread the word uh, with your community group, with your friend group, and even those who uh, may not have ever been in our church or any church. uh, I think it's a really wonderful opportunity with the book of Colossians, and especially in the Easter season, to just be intentional in your relationships and to invite people in that they might hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So I'm excited about that starting next Sunday. This Sunday, we're kind of in between series, and it's not just that we had to fill a random Sunday. We actually designed the start of Colossians to be next week for the opportunity to use this week. We just finished our giving series last week, moving to Colossians next week. We wanted there to be a Sunday for us to dedicate to kind of coming back to God's heart and vision around what it looks like for us to be a good citizens here of our community, what it looks like for us as believers in Jesus and followers of Jesus to live mercifully and missionally here in our city in this season, and particularly what it looks like for us as a church to be intentional as a church to do what we can to bear witness to Christ in this community and specifically to plant other churches. And so today we're going to be having an opportunity. I'm going to, I'm kind of like a warm up, okay? Um, I'm going to be sharing about 10, 15 minutes or so from God's Word. And then I'm going to be inviting Jordan and Audrey Frazier, who are church planting residents, who are pioneering our work in planting a church in Uptown Community, just a a little bit from here. Um, They're going to be coming up and joining me for us together to kind of hear some updates and then more importantly to pray um, as a church as we continue to move together toward planting a church in our city in this season. Does that sound good? So if you've got your Bibles this morning... The word that God's put on my heart to share with you is from Romans chapter 10. And again, I won't be preaching extensively from this or very long from this, but I did want to kind of get our attention to God's word so that we can lay some foundations for what I believe is on God's heart for us and for you in this season. We've been saying all year long, last summer our elder team prayed and asked God, for a word for our church and prayed and asked God to really show us what it was that we were supposed to be really focused on and dedicated for for the season ahead. And what he gave us, we've summarized in a simple statement. We've said it like this. We believe that God's called us to foster a merciful and missional presence in Memphis, one neighbor at a time. If you've been around this year, you've heard this again and again, this heart that God has for this city. We know that many of us are not uh, from Memphis originally. Some of you may not uh, stay in Memphis forever, but we're all here in Memphis in this time 
For such a time as this, the book of Esther would have us consider our own journey and our own particular moment in a particular time and in a particular place. And for such a time as this, we're all here. God in his sovereignty and in his providence has placed us here together. And I'm so grateful. We love this city. We love this community. And similar to the Jeremiah 29 vision, we're kind of like exiles who find ourselves in a, a foreign place, so to speak. I mean, not everything about Memphis is perfect, but it's the place that God has planted us. And he's asked us to call this place home and to be good neighbors in this place, to seek the welfare of this city that he's called us to, to pray for it, to ask God for peace, for in its peace we'll find our peace. And we've been together in this season as citizens of Memphis, and it hasn't been the the most rosy season, right, in our city. I mean, we can celebrate the good, but there's also been brokenness and burden in ways being a citizen of this city. And yet we're called here. Yet this is our home. And we've been saying we really have been asking God together as a church, God, would you help us lift our vision to you? Would we not just focus on what is broken, but God, would we focus on what you're doing? Would we want to join you with what you're doing in this city? And would we, together as your people, would we be a part of helping to spread your mercy and to shine your light in this moment in time? Would our time in Memphis be marked by showing mercy and living missionally here? Not in abstract ways, but with a specific classmate that sits next to me, with the folks who I see in the gym in the mornings, with the folks who live around me in my neighborhood and in my apartment complex, with my coworkers, with my bosses, with my subordinates, with, with my friend group, with my family group, with people that I see on the side of the street begging for help with people in our community who we know about the broken systems of justice and education, and you, you can continue on with the, with the people who are in those systems, the people who are in the communities that surround us, even outside of my normal driving areas or walking areas, would you give me a heart to care? Would I be able, would we be able to live mercifully and missionally here in this place and in this time so that all might know you? That's been our heart in this season. And I want to focus particularly today on the word missional in this, because I think in the fall, one of the things we were doing is really focusing a lot on merciful, especially in the book of Lamentations. But as we are here in the spring, and particularly this Easter season, you guys, I really want to ask you to embrace God's heart, to care about the citizens of this city, your neighbors, coworkers, friends, the grocery store clerk, the guy on the side of the street, the kids in the school systems that you serve, those who enter your healthcare environments, I'm asking that you look at people as God looks at them and care about their eternal souls. That you care about them, made in the image of God, and know that they need relationship with him and that you would be willing to do anything and everything and particularly to share the good news of Jesus with them that they might have opportunity to hear to respond, repent, and to believe in Christ and be saved in the ways that we're saved. Missional presence in our city. This missional mindset we describe here as a clear calling and an active involvement to live to see the gospel spread and churches planted at home and around the world. And I want to call your attention briefly to Romans chapter 10, starting in verse 8. And there's a couple of things I want to show you in this related to the opportunity and the need of us living missionally as followers of Christ. And the first is the great power of the gospel message. Starting in verse 8, we read, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same is Lord The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. I am so thankful that we have a God who is willing and able to save. Aren't you thankful that Jesus Christ saves? 
And that anyone and everyone, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of class, regardless of background, regardless of their brokenness and their story, you know your brokenness. You know your story. And that he set his love upon you. That he came to live. That he might give you his righteousness freely as a gift. He came to die, not because he had to, but because you deserved to. In your place, he died for your sin that he was buried in the ground, taking the place that you deserve to be. And after three days, he rose again to new life, that he might show that he is victorious over sin and Satan and death itself. He lives today as the triumphant king. And in his love for you, he extends an opportunity for you to believe upon him, to turn from sin, to confess truly he is God, truly he can save, and to believe upon him and experience new life in him. Aren't you grateful for a savior in Jesus Christ? And aren't you grateful for his indiscriminate love for all people? This is who our Savior is. And the message of Jesus Christ is powerful. It can change us. It can change anyone who believes. We are not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It's like a breakthrough. It is the power of God to save for all who believe in him. We're not ashamed of Jesus He is wonderful. He is safe here. There's the power in the gospel message, and there's an urgency, secondly, of gospel expansion. If you look at the scripture there in verse 13, he says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the good news. If you call upon Jesus, you can be saved. But then he goes on and he says, But how will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him in whom they've never heard? And how are they to hear without Someone preaching. There's an urgency of the gospel message. What Paul's saying is, yes, like Jesus is a savior and everyone who calls upon Jesus can be and will be saved. But you need to understand that not everybody knows yet that Jesus saves. How can they call on him if they've never believed in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard of him? And how can they hear of him if no one has told them? Here in Memphis, in our community, we often think about missions around the world, but well over 60% of our community would qualify themselves as religious. And yet you guys don't need me to tell you this. You know this because you've probably been in many personal conversations. I would conjecture that so many of that percentage, I don't know the exact amount, but so much of even those who would consider themselves religious or even identify as Christian have probably never heard a clear gospel message. They never had someone to actually look them in the eyes and say, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that he came for you? Do you know that he's more than enough for you? Let me tell you about who Jesus is. and Let me tell you about what he's done. And let me t- encourage you to stop looking for what your heart needs in all these other places. You can just look to Jesus. You can be broken over your sin and you can trust in him. And you can experience new life in him. I wonder, even here in religious Memphis, How many people have actually heard a clear gospel witness from someone else who loves them and has taken time to actually share that good message with them? It's something that's needed. We can't sit back and afford to wait for some other people to reach our neighbors and our coworkers and our friends. It's like firefighters. We have several of them in our community here who rushed into a burning building. The other day I saw this huge building burning over in Midtown and just after I saw Nate Douglas in our church at the at the Kroger, and he smelled so much like smoke. And I just looked him in the eyes, and I said, Nate, thank you. Thank you for what you do. It's it's crazy that you run into a place of great need. But we as Christians are like that. We run into the places of greatest need. I was listening to Paul Young just a few days ago give an interview with the Daily Memphian. He met with some gang leaders, and he got a lot of crap about it. People are going, why are you meeting with the gang leaders instead of arresting him? He said, I wanted to have a conversation with him. He's trying to negotiate a seven-day ceasefire in our city. And regardless of your politic, I think a ceasefire is a good thing. Can I get a witness? So, but he said one of the things that he learned as he was sitting with a gang leader, he said he was asking him about these young kids that are involved in all this violence and what it's going to take to stop. And he said the gang leader looked at him and said, you need to understand something. They're bored and they're hopeless. This is their gang leader. Understanding they're bored and they're hopeless. We can gripe all day long about the problems of our community. But the question is, what are we doing to get involved and help? 
Brokenness doesn't get fixed with patched up solutions. Brokenness needs to be healed by Jesus Christ. I am all for good government, but we also need good gospel ministry in our city, one neighbor at a time. If we want kids to get off the street, who's going to invest in them? Who's going to reach them? Who's going to share the good news of Jesus with them? I mean, you could go through and, and name all the problems of Memphis, but the, the thing is, we have to recognize there's an urgency. The brokenness around us says to us, it's speaking to us, and we're quick to criticize it, but God is raising it up to almost get our attention and go, hey, you, like, see the brokenness and the need? Like, for such a time as this, this is where the gospel is needed. It's crying out to us. Don't you see? Yes, there's deep need. You have the answer. You have Jesus Christ. Bear witness to Jesus. How will the need be addressed apart from Jesus? And how will Jesus get to the need if you don't bear witness to him? Do you see? Third, and I close with this, the responsibility for gospel witness. He says there in verse 15, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And then he says, but they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he's heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. We were in India uh, just last week, two weeks ago now, I guess, a week and a half. And uh, one of the the, the things that humbled uh, A.J. Mitchell and I when we arrived at this village, I mean, you you would never, ever find this place if you weren't intentionally trying to get there. I mean, it's just so far out, and the people were so poor and so hungry for, for God. But we arrived at the village, and they didn't really have much of anything. Our church paid for the tents to be set up, the food to be served, them to even get there to this remote place. I'm so thankful for the generosity of our church and the ministry that we had together. But we arrived at this village, and all of a sudden, we, we, we get out of the car and Christina says, oh, brothers, you're in for a treat. The entire like, Christian community was gathered around in this one place. And all of a sudden, we, we step out of the car and they're all like eagerly looking at us. And this lady pours out from this jar of water just there in the dirt. They didn't even have like a, a, a true like, entrance, but she just poured a line in the dirt. And it was like she created a door frame. And, and, they, and then they summoned us to like step across the line. And as we did... It was amazing. They started shouting, and they started beating on the drums. And all of a sudden, this girl comes up, and it was the most humbling thing ever. It was like almost like we wanted to refuse it, but she starts coming up, and she's like, she has a cloth, and she starts washing our feet, stepping across the dirt. They joyful celebration, washing our feet, handing us flowers that they had picked for us. It was this, it was this overwhelming moment, and I was like, Why is she touching my feet? That is gross. And she was almost saying to us, oh, how beautiful are your feet, for your feet are bringing you to bear good news of Jesus. It was a joyful welcome because they are longing for Jesus. It's a picture for all of us, I believe. People need Jesus. And when we step into their lives by inviting them for a dinner in our home, or having a conversation over coffee after work, or pulling them aside after gym, or hanging out with them at pickleball, on the courts after class, whatever it is, when we pull people aside and we begin to bear witness to Jesus, we step over a line and God says, whether they welcome you with drums and flowers and kisses on your feet, you need to know something. Your feet are beautiful because you're bearing witness to Jesus. And when you step over those lines, What a beautiful thing God is doing. Every person needs Jesus. Therefore, every believer needs to share Jesus. And I just want to encourage you. What if each of us in this season, this Easter month, what if each of us had the opportunity to just commit to just sharing the hope of Jesus more in our daily lives? At least one person a week. What if... Every neighborhood in Memphis, we as a church were committed to go, you know what? We got to get more churches out here. Like we got, if if the brokenness of our city is going to be healed, it's going to be healed through Jesus Christ. And we need to step over those lines and, and see that every person has an opportunity to hear Jesus and every community has an opportunity to have a church. And what if 
all of us embrace this personal calling and ambition to just make much of Jesus, to be bold in sharing the life-changing, hope-filled message of Jesus for such a time as this. I'm going to call Jordan and Audrey Frazier to the stage, and I would encourage you to give them a huge round of applause. Um, uh, Jordan and Audrey are amazing, and they have um, been laboring with us. Can y'all believe it? I was counting the months. Hey, I'll give you a hug. I haven't even seen you this morning. Good it's good to see you. Um, I have, it was seven months now, Jordan. Seven months ago. Feels like, feels like five minutes underwater. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Just kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Good it's, joke. That's a good one. Um, seven months that y'all started the residency. I guess eight months now that you moved back. And uh, what a journey. Um, first of all, I just want y'all to know how much I love you, how much we love you as a church, how thankful we are for you, how proud we are of what God's done through you already and what he's doing. Um, we want this time to be a time of just update. There's personal mission for all of us, but also there's a corporate kind of mission that we have in this season as we're thinking about what Memphis needs uh, and the desire for more churches in our city. We've been really praying toward a new church in Uptown, and a lot's been happening. So what's been going on? Let's talk. Um, how would you summarize kind of the big updates of this last season? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I look back at the last seven months, and it's kind of a whirlwind thinking through all that we've experienced and, and we've worked through and as we're preparing to plant. And um, you can summarize it kind of three ways, I think, is the best way to, to do it. The first way is um, like community engagement and development, um, relationships in the community, knowing our neighbors, getting invested in uh, different groups that are doing things like neighborhood watches or uh, being a part of different ways that we can serve in Uptown, um, trying to reconnect with people that we had previous connections with, and then trying to establish new ones. Uh, I think the second thing is just a lot of personal growth and like leadership and organization. Uh, so kind of how I spend my time throughout the week, some of my week is here just trudging through things that um, I just haven't learned yet. And learning through uh, reading with uh, tons of books. Um, I've got like, it's funny, it was, I remember there was a particular month where I was assigned two like thousand page books and I looked at Barrett and I was like, Barrett, come on now, what, what are we doing? Um, but it's been really good in that those, those things have been super helpful as, uh, as information and knowledge that I can partner with real experiences that I'm living in. As, as we're working in Uptown. And the last would be just the development of what we think the church looks like with vision and values and the mission of what we feel called to and what we think God's calling us in. That's awesome. All right, so stories on, you're saying community involvement. Um, how are those, how has that been reflected in this last season and what are the ways that you've been kind of being invested in Uptown? I know y'all moved in. And I know a lot of our members have been to your house, especially Spaghetti Nights. Pretty awesome. Um, and I know it's a community you've loved a lot for a long time, but what does that look like in these last seven, eight months um, in terms of y'all's investment and involvement? What have you seen God doing? How have you joined him in that? So um, we moved in and we um, got to know our neighbors immediately. That was really important for us to know who lives on our street in particular. Yeah. Um, and then, like Jordan said, reconnecting with people that we had known previously. We lived in Uptown before we moved to Nashville. And um, one of the things that I got to do in this last season was um, I, there are practical needs in our yeah. neighborhood. And so um, one of the things I got to do recently was go around and tape light poles and report lights that are out. Hmm. So uh, we got together a group of people to do that. And um, I was with, in a group with two neighbors that I had known previously. And so um, just got to ride around with them and 
check out all the light poles. Well, that opens itself up to conversation. Yeah. And so we just spent that time, and it was a Saturday night, and so one of them was like, it's cold, and it's Saturday night, and we've got church in the morning, you know? And I was like, oh, well, where do you go to church? And that opened itself up to a conversation that I really didn't expect. I was just expecting an answer, like I go to so-and-so, you know? Um, but the reality was that she doesn't have a church home, that she, post-COVID, has not returned in person. But more than that, she shared all of her hurt from her past. I mean, she went back to, like, my parents left me when I was five and I was raised by my grandparents and this and that and just went all the way back. And I wasn't expecting that, but it showed that, like, God was already there. He was already working in that moment, that he was preparing that time for me to be there, to be with her, to listen to her story. The rapport that we had from when we lived here before was still there after six long years of being gone and silent. God was still moving and working in people's hearts in our neighborhood. And I was, all I did was ask, you know, and she was ready to just share. And so I think any time that we can just be there, just be involved, be next to the people and be ready for a conversation, it's there. God is moving. He is working. He is yeah. ready for, for the time, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really funny because sometimes the most mundane things actually end up being like the holiest things. And you walk into things thinking this is just another meeting or this is just another time that I'm investing. And you walk away going, all right, Lord, you, you showed up in a way that I, I couldn't have manufactured myself. Like last week, I went to a meeting that has not been profitable at all for me. It has just been a thing that I go to and... Um, there's a lot of people in there that I now network with, but it's just, it f has felt a lot of times like a waste of time. And I remember going in there and just being obedient. All right, Lord, I know that I need to be here. I just, whatever, whatever comes from this comes from this. And, uh, within that meeting, I had connections with three different people in three totally different ways that met questions that I was having about the church plant. So, uh, one was uh, ways to invest, and I ended up sitting next to a lady who's a new business owner in our uh, in our neighborhood. Um, she they're opening up in April, and they're gonna have a they're gonna have a big event in April where they um, open up. And I just said, hey, we could we would love to help put that on for you. Like I've got bodies that could come and be of help. I think she's wanting to do something like a, a 5k walk and run as they open their business, which would be so cool in our neighborhood. And I said, let's connect. I would love to invest in what you're doing because I want to partner with people that are bringing good things to the area. And then a guy sought me out that, um, has access to understanding different properties in our area. And one of the big things that we're looking for right now is a place to meet. Um, and so as we had just met, he said, Hey, where are you guys currently meeting? I said, well, we're looking for a place. And he's like, well, what do you need? And so I was like, well, uh, you know, I don't know here. And here's what I'm thinking. He's like, let me see what we have. Let's, let me see what access to different buildings and properties we have. And we'll get back in touch. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, it was a, a neighbor that was at the meeting. Who's already investing in kids in the community, she teaches yoga on Wednesday nights to kids in our community center, which I think is hilarious and fascinating. Yes, absolutely. And um, she came up to me, and Audrey reminded me that we knew her from before, and I didn't, I didn't remember her. But she greeted me like, like we were best of friends, and, and I just kind of played along. And she said, hey, I didn't know you were planning a church in our neighborhood. And I said, yeah, we're hoping to have services by, you know, August. We're hoping to really open the doors and... It'd be a place for people in our neighborhood to connect and be a part. And she said, I was just talking to my husband last week about desiring a church in our neighborhood so that we could get invested and involved. Could you think I, I would be welcome at your church? And I was like, yes, please, please come. Like, we'll start tomorrow, you know, like, um, and it was just wild. I did nothing on all those three things. Like I sat beside the lady, the guy was there, he approached me. This lady approached me. I was just present. 
And I think that's what's so beautiful to me, us in this season is it's almost like this, God is meeting us there in this really spiritual, this really incredible way that we can't manufacture. And God is finding ways to just show us glimpses of what he's doing and what he's, what he's striving to do. You know, I had a conversation last week again with um, one of the directors over at the gym and I'd invited her to Christmas Eve when I preached on Christmas Eve. She had been out of church for a long, long time. And I preached on Christmas Eve. She went to another church at another time, just to kind of like got this spiritual feeling moving in her. So she's like, maybe I need to go to church. And she said she visited another church and then she came back and she was like, can I just, when, when you guys do church, can I just be a part of that? Because I really, the way in which you taught, the way in which you care about me, like it means a lot. And so, yeah, there are just things like that that are happening and I'm just so grateful for that. Leanne sent me this article the other day and it was talking, it was from the Gospel Coalition and it was a guy in Jacksonville that had invested uh, in a neighborhood similar to Uptown. And it was crazy because it was almost verbatim what I feel as we're in Uptown, the opportunities, the um, just seeing God at work, the, the vast needs that you can plug into and be a part of. And one of the things he said at, at, the, end of, at the end of the article that I resonated with a lot, and I think it explains why we, we do what we do and why we feel invested in that community. He said, I ha- I'm not looking for a place where I want to live. I'm looking for a place where I'm willing to die. And in this place I'm willing to die, I, w- I want it to be a place where I'm willing to pour everything out that I have. And for us, like, there's probably more desirable places to live. But I think the calling on our life is knowing that, like, I think we're called to, to be in this neighborhood for the long haul and pour ourselves out for it. And there's no greater joy in my life than like being in the middle of that. It's amazing. And I heard you got a chaplaincy at Greenlaw. Yeah, An- another really crazy story in that um, Greenlaw Community Center has been trying to bring in more organizations to do different types of things for neighbors. Um, from anything from like MIFA to counseling to healthcare, stuff like that. People that are there throughout the day so that people can walk into our community center and get cared for, uh, basically get needs cared for. And I remember this particular day as I was hearing about it, I looked at the director and I said, it sounds like we're really trying to give people holistic care in our neighborhood. What are we doing spiritually for our people? And I'm pretty sure that director is, is not a believer. And he's like, I, I don't know, what, what do you suggest? <laughs> and uh, quickly I was just like, I can be here. Like, let me, I wanna be here. Like I can commit at least a day a week to be here. I can schedule appointments with families that are in crisis. I can sit with people in prayer. Like I can mentor young kids. You just tell me what, you, what all I need to do, I can do it, all. I, I'll be here. And uh, he was like, yeah, that sounds great. And I was like, this is, a, this is a city parks gym, and they have a wide open door into a pastor coming and mentoring kids, praying with families, and giving crisis counseling to people in need. Like, I, that's crazy. Again, God is just going before us in some of those things. So cool. And giving us opportunity. I remember the day you came in telling us about that, and you're like, can, can y'all help me make a brochure so I look legit? Yeah, <laughs> so, for sure. <laughs> we're for like, sure. yeah, we're, you know. Uh, Chaplain Jordan now I'm offering just, his I'm services. Some dude, you know. Yeah, but what a cool way to like connect with people who are far from God and far from the doors of a church. I just love your incarnational, very intentional way of life. Even the street lamp thing, so cool. How have y'all been learning? You mentioned that as a second thing. And and by the way, I think there are some slides around some of these things that Jordan's mentioning. He made a few. Yeah, uh, per- perfect. This is it. Oh, there yeah, it is. So yeah, yeah. three things. So I've been meeting with other church planners in our city. So yeah. each month I try to tackle um, just relationships and networking with other, other guys who have gone before me and done it. Yeah. And I usually look at them and I say, what worked and what didn't? Like, what would you go back and change? What do you think I need to know? And most pastors or church planners would give you what didn't. Oh, oh absolutely. Large, yeah. large list of that. Yeah. But it's been super helpful just to sit with them and be able to share the vision of what I am wanting to do and get confirmation of like, 
hey, that makes a lot of sense. That yeah. would be a great step. Or have you thought about doing it this way? And I think that's been really helpful for me to, to walk in and be in a position of humility and saying, hey, I'm not, I'm not greater or better just because I'm doing this. There, there are men and there are women and there are people that have gone before me that I need to learn from. Yeah. And I want to position myself in a place um, to learn from those people. We talked a little bit about the reading and the, and the learning. I remember when I first got the residency, I came home with this 50-page checklist packet. And Audrey's like, what is that? And I was like, this is my job over the next year and a half. <laughs> and it's literally just, uh, you know, it's tons of stuff every month that I'm kind of multitasking and working through. Uh, in You've partnership, done a great job, by the way. In partnership with the church, but also in learning some of those things yeah. and in developing um, different structures that are needed for uh, um, the church to work, like a constitution or um, the structures of how we uh, do things. And so, yeah, all that's kind of been the personal growth journey for me. Yeah. Some people wonder, uh, what do you do with your time? And <laughs> Jordan does a lot. Um, he has been so intentional in his pursuit of God, his pursuit of learning more of the word, learning more of what it looks like to minister in all kinds of various contexts, including teaching. He'll be part of our upcoming teaching series. That's all been a very intentional in his development, intentional in learning and reading. Audrey, you're probably sick and tired of seeing Jordan with a book in his face. Um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it means like, I'm quiet. Actually, could you give yeah, him more? Like, Please. Could you give him more? Keep the books coming. But um, in the development of all the organizational, the foundational things that you're, you'll, you'll begin to hear about even today, but you've, you've done so well. I'm really proud of you for how you've pursued that and pursue relationships. I think you've grown in great respect and influence among the church planning community, especially here in the inner city. I'm proud of you for that. Um, yeah, you mentioned third, that development of vision. And so that's interesting to me because I think that's what probably I've seen emerge the most out of the two of y'all. It's like coming in with a clear calling, but then working to clarify and to communicate what is the specificity of that vision and what, what is God doing as it relates to a new foundation and framework for your church versus ICC? So how would you describe what that's been about? A lot of sweat, a lot of tears, um, a lot of searching kind of how God has made us and how we feel like God is calling us to lead. Yeah. Um, and doing that with, with the context in mind of our community. It's, it's had to look like relearning our community in a way to understand what needs our community has and what type of church um, best impacts people in our community. And so um, anything from our constitution and learning, like what, what could be obstacles or stumbling blocks for people in a church um, constitutional-wise and how do we maintain our convictions to the Bible, our convictions, like, and understanding theologically, also while giving, um, like, understanding the context of how that meets people. And the same thing is true for, it's called a vision frame. We got that from uh, a guy named Will Mancini, who's done a lot of work. We've actually used him here at ICC for a lot of the vision stuff that we've done, but he's done a lot of work just creating, um, I think he saw a lot of aimless churches, Churches that um, knew that they were supposed to get together and worship and pray and fellowship together, but didn't really have an understanding of what else God was calling them to. And in that, there were a couple books that he wrote that have been great resources, but it's just developing just an idea of what, what it is that God is wanting to do in Uptown. And after a long, long, long process of like mulling through different things, I remember we had a specific day where... Um, we sat outside of a coffee shop. You probably remember this. You're probably going to talk about it. Um, Robbie Barrett and I sat outside a coffee shop and I had written this long paragraph of what after this was after weeks and months of like trying to like understand in five years what, what I want the church to look like. And I'd written this long paragraph and I just went through it and I couldn't get all the way through it. I just started crying. And um, Barrett and Robbie started crying and we were just, Three white dudes in a black neighborhood sitting out on, you know, on, on uh, chairs and people are driving by wondering what in the world are these dudes doing? And uh, it was kind of the birth of a lot of um, really deep heart things that I think led us to just a more simplified understanding of what, what it is we want the church to be. You know, for, for ICC, we've, we've had a mission statement and a vision statement for a long time. 
we are being transformed by Jesus to impact our world, right? That's, I remember years and years ago as we mulled through that and tried to figure out what that looked like. And so it's really exciting to me to get to a place where I felt like this is what the Uptown Church plant is about. This is what it, this is the statement that we want to hang our hat on. And that statement is this, uh, this is just developed in the last couple months, but it's, we are a community changed by Jesus, fostering justice, mercy, and hope in Uptown. And I, th- I look at that statement and it involves like true sense of community of people that care for each other. And we care for each other in a way because ultimately it's Jesus that we rally around other th- than everything else. And then it's three unique ways for us to be involved in Uptown. Uptown involvement in justice, in mercy, and in bringing hope. And so that's, that's kind of a, a baby that was birthed after a long process of, of figuring out what it is we really are supposed to do in Uptown and what's God, what is God calling us to. So beautiful um, and so unique. It, it's coming from our church, this new church plant, but it's, even though, like you said, so theologically uh, similar, contextually, I just love how God has like given y'all freedom to just express the richness of the gospel and some of the nuances of the gospel in ways that I think will connect so deeply and importantly there in Uptown. And can I say something yeah. real fast? I think part of it is, and I want to encourage the church in this. Part of the reason we got to this place and even get when we talk about values in a little bit later, um, we got to do that because there was a freedom and a humility of our church, of our leaders to say, hey, we've been in this area for a long time. We've struggled to do ministry well in this area. We think God's calling us to church plant because that's how we reach these people. We have a heart to reach these people, but we, we may not know how to do it ourselves. And what I'm so encouraged by is the freedom and the grace that I've had to walk into things that God has convicted me on and to be able to be so different and yet be able to rally around like just the grace that God gives all of us. Yeah. And so I just want to thank you and the church for that in that this is really a, a partnership that has allowed a lot of, a lot of fruit and growth because of your willingness to be humble and your willingness to uh, allow me to walk in things and learn things kind of on my own. Yeah, it's a great joy for all of us. Tell me, okay, so y'all are expressing things differently and you've embraced values that are unique to who you are and how God's called you, made you, and what's needed in Uptown. So maybe talk to us a little bit about, uh, I think one of the greatest areas of uniqueness, and that is y'all's values that you've expressed uh, for the church plan. Yeah, I mean, one, of the, one of the ones that's the same, and everybody can take a deep sigh of relief, is we lead from the Bible. We, I mean, that is, that is something that we're committed to I didn't to give you the freedom to change that one. No. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's something we're committed to as a value. We think that, we think that God's word is, is what helps guide us to live our life closest to Jesus, right? We believe that when we make decisions, we've got to look to scripture. We believe that when we teach, we gotta not teach from what we may desire, but really go to the source material and do that well yeah. and lead people out of that well. So that that one is the same. Audrey's gonna tell you about the about the second one, which is probably super unique to Audrey and I. We're willing to get messy. Um If you've been to our house, it's not perfect. We live there with children. It's messy. (laughs) We're messy people. Um, We're not all put together. Um, I think that's one thing that we struggled to accept for a while, um, that we're not put together. And I think over the last several years, ultimately the Lord has spoken to us and said, that's a quality that I gave you to relate to others. Mm -hmm. And um, life is not put together. Life is messy. It gets crazy. It gets um, uncomfortable. And so embrace that. Embrace that in yourself that you're, you're the type of person that just, you know, lets it all out there. And so other people can then see you're not all put together and you can 
move forward in that place of vulnerability. Um, it's not easy to work with people. They make mistakes. Um, it's not easy to work with youth. It's not easy to work with um, the lost. Yeah. Uh, we can't expect that life is going to be smooth and go well. So we just have to embrace that. And so we wanted it to be a place where you can bring your mess because ultimately Jesus said, bring it all to me. Bring all the mess, bring all the hurt, bring all the burdens, bring everything to me. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, well, when you get it together, you yeah. can come. Yeah. That's not how it is. And so we wanted to upfront say, you can bring all of your mess. We will, you know, be there with you. We'll, we'll meet you with our mess. You can bring your mess. We'll bring it to messy situations and we'll just trust God. Mm. We'll trust that God's going to show up and do the work. Mm. And I think that's a lot of the, the problems and the difficulties in our area and even doing ministry in Uptown. I think it's a, um, it's a messy thing. And so I think we just have to lean into that and be willing to kind of roll up our sleeves and, and be messy for a bit and be willing to bring uh, us as ourselves, knowing that we're all works in progress towards the work and trusting that God will work through us. He's chosen to work through imperfect people to, to bring about what he, yeah. he desires. So good. Another one that's really unique is um, we declare Jesus over tribe. Um, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, our area is a predominantly black area and we are not um, we are white. We're two white people. We have two black children, and which makes us unique, but it also separates us a bit. And our desire is not to shy away from that, but also but to lean into the fact that at the end of the at the end of the day, we believe that declaring Jesus as the most important thing in our lives actually brings people together from all different uh, cultures and backgrounds and ethnicities. And if we're willing to embrace that. Uh, our differences and celebrate that God made us different, then we can actually go farther together as a unique group um, that look different, that speak different, that, that live differently. If we're willing to say, hey, Jesus is most important. Yeah. And if we're willing to do that, then I think we can go a long way declaring, declaring that. Yeah. This is Audrey's favorite, this next one. I'm willing to go slow. Um, I think over the last several years, um, my journey of motherhood has showed me that I'm just human. Yeah. I think when we were young and first married, it was like, go, go, go. I'm going to, you know, do all the things for Jesus. And then um, we got kids. And I had to, I had to slow down. And um, I had to realize that I'm human and God made me human. And he's not asking me to be God. He's asking me to be human. And ultimately, if I try to go at a pace that is faster than God, I'm just spinning my wheels. Yeah. So I have to slow down, align myself with what he's doing, and just be present in those moments and allow him to do the work and me to go alongside. And if it is fast, great. But if it's slow, that's great too. Yeah. And we can embrace building a slow, long-term relationship and just being present in the moment and caring for people well. Yeah, so beautiful. Uh, the next one is something that's dear to my heart. It's a kind of a, I think when I first got to the church and started interviewing and I talked to the staff, it was something that I said and you were like, tell me about that. Write that down. That um, was so good. I remember, yeah. I remember I read a book a while back and it had this phrase, we wage peace, what it means to wage peace in a place that um, doesn't see it. And I think it's positioning ourselves in a way that uh, values to live in harmony with one another and to live in harmony with God. And I think a lot of times we think of peace as this stagnant, um, cautious thing that we, we have to um, silently walk in. Well, I actually think 
when we look at Jesus and the way that he brought about peace to people in their lives, he was active hmm. and he was uh, seeking it out in, their li- in the lives of people and groups. And so I think for us, it's an active reaching out towards people and desiring for us to be in community together and for them to have peace with their creator, hmm. uh, with God. And so waging peace for me is something that, uh, you know, I don't know if we can talk about Enneagram here, but I am an Enneagram non to the T. So it is like something that is an innate desire for me to, to make peace. Yeah. And um, it's just a value that I have and I, I, I desire for our community to be a part of. The last two we have are, are, are I think, again, really similar to um, just the way that we're wired. And we value relationship over organization. Anyone that had to go on a mission trip with me long, long time ago, I'm sorry. Um, anyone that uh, had to have things organized for me when I was a young man and didn't know any better, I would need to apologize to you. But um, I remember in my previous job in Middle Tennessee, there was a, a point where I looked at my boss and I said, if you're going to ask me to do this or this, I'm going eva- to value relationship over that always. I'm going to always pick relationship. And one of the things that was helpful, he was like, well, great. If you pick relationship, then if you know that you'll always pick relationship in that setting, then make time for the other thing in other places. And I think that's where I've grown a little bit. The, the truth is a church plant has to be organized. There has to be structures that make it make sense. There has to be a backbone of things that we believe and the way that we do things. Uh, and so those things are happening, but those things are, are there and present so that as I lead and as Audrey leads, we can, we can lead out a relationship yeah. because I think that's where we thrive. I think that's where God's um, gifted us most is yeah. in relationship with others. Yeah. And then the last thing is just an idea of we value all people. We know that all people, Genesis 127, all people are created in the image of God. And if God, simple as this, if God values all people, so will we. Yeah. And uh, I think that, that message to our neighbors, to people that, live differently, look differently. Um, I think that's a message that we've got to carry strongly in our neighborhood. It's like we see the value in what you do and who you are. And we want you to know that God sees you where you are. So, yeah, those are our values. What do y'all think, church? Pretty amazing, right? I'm like, it's so beautiful. Um, It's just so breathed by God. I mean, it's, yeah. I remember the day we were sitting at mug and coffee and we were just crying. <laughs> but seeing all of this come to, these things have been in your heart. These are, these are ways you've known the Lord and seen the Lord and felt the call of the Lord. But to see them expressed so clearly now that others, all of us can hear it and go, yes, like that is right. And that, that's exactly what Uptown needs. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so thank you for investing all that you've invested to this point to be able to even cast this vision for us. I know that uh, many of us probably last heard an update. We were in November, and we were talking about those, like, prayer nights, the Uptown Interest Nights, and we were really praying back in the fall toward the formation of a core team. And that's still something we have in our vision as a ICC church is wanting to send out, we had named, I think, early on 10 people to form a core team uh, to join you in what God is doing in Uptown. So what's the update there? And... Yeah, how can we pray? Yeah, so um, earlier this month, or actually in February, I guess mid-February, we kind of circled back with, we had, we had been talking to a lot of those people throughout the winter, um, but we circled back with all of them and for the first time gathered the majority of them together face-to-face because most of those conversations were conversations Audrey and I had over dinner or at coffee individually with people, mm-hmm. and we hadn't actually gathered everyone together so that they see like, Oh, you're curious about this? I'm, I'm curious yeah. about this too. And so we gathered them together in mid-February and actually did some of the similar things we've done today and talked through our vision and our values, answered questions, and uh, just fellowship together and got to um, be together. And one of, the things that I, one of the things I said in that time was, in this room, I think there are people who, who are called to come and be a part of this with us, and yeah. I think there are people who may be fans yeah. And we're going to need fans. Like, we're going to need people that support the work for us. Um, but I need to know, in this room, I need to know who those people are. And so 
uh, I remember sitting with uh, just those people and said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a couple weeks to just pray, work yeah. through this. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple weeks to ask God. I'm going to give you a couple weeks to follow back with me if there are more questions that you have. And after that couple weeks, I'm just going to come and say, hey, where are you at? What, what's going on? Are you in or are you out? Yeah. And I think that um, just giving that clear vision of saying, hey, I, we've got to know so that we can move forward because there's so much that we need to do before August. There's some a level. There's training. There's outreach events that we need to do. There's time together where we just need to be together in prayer and fasting and time of worship together as we as we prepare to launch and lead this thing. And so with that, I think um, we have several right now who have said, "Hey, I'm in. Yeah. I, I want to be a part." And for those people, you know who you are. Just know that my heart is so glad and excited to do the work of ministry with you in the coming weeks, months, years. And then we have others who I think are still trying to figure it out. But one of the things we're really trying to do is keep that core team at a small enough number so that it is not ICC overwhelming Uptown, yeah. but it's a small group of people who are committed to Uptown so that the hope is in August when we launch, we're actually dwarfed by the amount of people that show up that first Sunday yeah. or in the first few months because it's truly a church for uptown people and not an ICC church in uptown. Yeah. And so as scary as it is to keep that team small, I think it's also right missiologically yes. and as we plant that church so that our neighbors don't feel like targets. Our neighbors feel like people that are valued. Yeah. And they see the church as theirs from the very beginning. So that's where we're at. It's so beautiful and so important. And we're going to ask you, everybody, this over the next months. Please do not plan on being a looky-loo in August, okay? So we don't need to go over there and just be like, I want to go show up one Sunday. And, you know, they would love to have you. But hang out with them another time. It's really important that uh, for our church that we're disadvantaging ourselves in terms of the number uh, compared to uptown residents because it really needs to be only those who are core committed to this church planning movement um, and then trying to reach the rest of all attenders organically through relationship from the neighborhood. So we don't want to mess that up, right? You don't want to mess that up. But what you can do, I think, is continue to pray um, for God to touch the hearts of those who are in our church who he's wanting to be a part of that committed group. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you speaking... Wanna... Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to give an update of ways to pray on? Yeah. I was going to say, speaking of prayer, how can we pray? And we'll close our time like that. Yeah. So um, we believe in the power of prayer. Yeah. I mean, we definitely think that prayer moves mountains. We've seen it personally in our lives. Um, if you don't know us, come and find us and find out how prayer has moved in our lives. It's yeah. been incredible. So when I ask you to pray, I really am asking you to pray. Yeah. And because I believe that the work will be done through prayer. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, we need a location. Um, if you've been to our house, you've probably been crowded. <laughs> um, so it's, it's too small to start a church in. Yeah. Um, so we need a location. I think also it would be really great for our community to have a building, a space, a safe place where they know this is our church. Yeah. Um, so please pray for a location. Um, I do think God is opening doors in that area, but we'd like to get there. Um, pray for our community and for our neighbors, the people that um, their hearts are open, that pray that they are, you know, ready and willing to, to have relationship with us, um, that they are open to this spiritual movement in our neighborhood um, just pray for them as we're meeting them, that we uh, communicate well, that we uh, communicate love. Um, just pray, pray that their hearts are, are softened to the word. Yeah. Um, and then pray for our team. Um, like we were just talking about, like pray for our core team, that they um, feel conviction, that they feel the calling, because um, we want to know that they're committed. And yeah. um, Pray that they uh, feel that, that they are um, walking alongside the Lord and the Holy Spirit and feeling, feeling that. Pray that they're um, 
able to be in the word regularly. Pray that they are um, that they are willing to hear from the, the training that we do over the next several months, that their, their posture is one of learning um, and humility. Yeah. And um, I, I, To add on to that for that team real quickly, I think pray for the, the spiritual health of yeah. those people. If you imagine, like, the courage of I've established myself in a community that has cared for me, has loved me, has guided me, and I'm feeling that I'm called to something brand new, and it's smaller, and it's scarier, and how do, how do I do that? And even if I decide to do that, there's all these emotions of grief, mm-hmm. of here's what I'm giving up, or here's what I'm losing, or here's what I'm sacrificing. And I think, I think the truth is, like, we've got to lean into that and understand yeah. that those are real feelings that people are going to have. They're real feelings that I have, even thinking of um, the, some of the loneliness of it. And so I just want to pray for those people that are making that choice, yeah. that they um, just love them well in this season. Uh, if, if you know someone who said, hey, this is what I'm going to do, my prayer is over the next, next few months you would just pour out love over them so that they know that God is taking care of them. In yeah. it. What a good way. Well, as we close today, I know that we've made a QR code. Um, if anybody, you know, you ICC and QR codes. Um, we love them. We love them. If anybody would be interested in uh, joining a, an email list to uh, partner with the Frasers and just getting prayer updates, finding out specific ways to serve over the next few months, or even opportunities, special opportunities to give as things continue to come together to help with things like buying chairs or a trailer, if we are able to, if God provides a building, like how to build that out. If you would be interested in just knowing more, this is not signing up for the core team. That's happening through relationships in another way. This is signing up for just updates from Jordan and Audrey's heart and on their email list. Yes, you'll still be a part of ICC, but you'll also be even more of a part of what our church is doing to try to pray for and intentionally invest in the future of this church plan. Yeah, I think this is the basic way of saying if if you're an ICC attender, if you're a member of ICC and you're saying, how can I get involved? This is how you do it. Yep. Just by being aware of what we're going to, this is probably one of the last times on a Sunday that we'll get together and give you you all these huge updates. A lot of these updates will come... um, through that list uh, yeah. of what's going on and, and how you can be a part. Because there may be times where we'll need a group of people to come uh, serve in unique ways. It may benefit us in that. And so if there are things like that that are inter- in, you're interested in, this is the best way to do that. Yeah. Church, can we just say thank you again to Jordan and Audrey? We love you. So proud of y'all. Thankful for you. Um, we're with you. We're with you all the way. And it will not be the last time on a Sunday we focus on this uh, because it's really, really important. And one of the most important things I think we've ever done as a church and really special. I want to say, you know, we're going to close this time. Um, but And this day has been different. I know that. But intentionally so. It's really important to me as your pastor to, to say to you, This work of church planning biblically is done. Churches plant churches. It's not just Jordan and Audrey. It's not just the leadership. We as a church are having the joy of getting to be a part of what God is doing and seeing this new church birth from our church. And every single one of us as members has that opportunity to find joy in it, to be a part of praying for it, and to do what we can to be invested in it. So as we close today, what I'd like for us to do is something a little different for us at ICC. But um, we do it every so often, and that is just to find a few people around you, and I'm just going to ask that you just pray over this work as we close today. I think that'd be the best way for us to kind of end our time together. It's just to say, God, um, it's like the song that, that it says, just establish the work of our hands. It's in the sense of like, God, we can't do this, but Lord, you can. And we believe this is what you're doing. You have a heart for our city. You have a heart for Uptown. And so God, we're just bringing this to you and saying, God, would you just... Would you just do this uh, through us and just ask for these specific prayer requests that Audrey has named and Jordan has named. We just pray over each of those things and so we could put that back up on the screen. Um, you can pray over those things and even pray for your own personal sense of merciful missional presence in the season. Like I shared from Romans 10, I really believe God has something for you. 
I think there are people around you day to day that really need Jesus. There are people in your life right now that need Jesus. And God has you in their life that you might bear witness to him. And so I'm just asking that you also just pray for your own merciful missional presence with your neighbors uh, in this season of great opportunity and need. Okay, so find some folks right around you. We'll close in prayer and then we'll sing a song and um, we'll use that as our kind of close for worship. But thank you again. I'm gonna pray with y'all before you go. We can pray now. Thank you again for watching this Bible teaching from Island Community Church. We want to encourage you to join us in person for worship soon. For more information about our worship gatherings, gospel resources, and ways to connect with ICC, you can visit us at iccmemphis.com or download our Island Community Church app. As we close, we offer a prayer of blessing for you from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope.